It is hard indeed to know what to know to make of a channel that leaps from discussing LGBT-themed sandwiches to strange and bizarre <sighs> verbalizations, rants, what shall I call it? What about the horrors of unpronounceable names and crimes? But before I go on further, since I'm replying to a video that involved the death of a child and a young woman who was just out of childhood, I shall briefly say a perpetual light shine upon them as a mark of respect. I feel rather icky touching the whole subject, but I do feel that this sort of stuff can't just be left to poison the discourse of British public life endlessly in a, an ugly manner. Firstly, before we go any further, a small bit of humour. This is the website, Joe, which tends to specialise in a rather particular type of satire. Sometimes it's a bit rough, but I have a reason for opening it. Notice the date? 3rd of May 2019. MS launched LGBT sandwich celebrating Pride. Now, there were all sorts of opinions on this sandwich. Personally, I'm of the opinion that it's basically been done for profit and to ride a, a fad. And I'm not particularly fond of all this stuff. I, uh, I don't particularly love to see my sh the sh shelves politicised in this way. Um, but there's never been any suggestion by m and that it has anything to do with wet the West Indies or Jamaica. And Simon has added that complete nonsense on from his own head. It's just coincidental that you've got black, green and yellow on there. And it's been on there for the last few years. Notice that a date on that, May the 2nd, 2019. Webb is just seeking something to create, to basically stir the feces with. But far more seriously, because that's just a bit of silliness, was his assertions about hard to pronounce names and silliness like this. Let's use Webb's own links to refute some of this. This is the link about Daniel Ajorian being killed, a man charged with murdering boy in sword attack. Webb maintained the attack involved a Nigerian and a Br Brazilian. It certainly did. It involved this young boy, who was of Nigerian descent, being killed. Now, Webb creates very strange narratives. To me, this is a young boy at the beginning of his life, just a short of adulthood. And yet, yeah, he's reduced to a Nigerian in the Webb narrative. He's dismissed to another space. He's just a Nigerian, not a child, just a Nigerian. Well, top marks there, Mr. Webb, for tastelessness. Truly lovely. However, he then comes to Grace O'Malley Kumar later in his remarks. Now, Grace O'Malley, as you can probably guess, came from Ireland, but the Kumar on the end of the name should indicate to you that our family has another heritage, and that's a nation one. Now, I personally view the death of both of these people as a tragedy. Grace and Marley Kumar was a young woman just out of adulthood who was apparently a highly intelligent, bright student who had a lot to offer the world. And Daniel Adoran's potential is lost. It will go in a coffin or he will be cremated. There's nothing to celebrate here. Only the loss of innocent lives and the damage to two police officers who have been horrifically maimed. Yet that has been turned into a narrative to start nonsense about unpronounceable names. Mr. Webb, you seem to have missed your calling. Perhaps Scotland Large could set you up a, a desk up there and give you a rank of chief super. And you could sort of just flick through di directories or... If the Yellow Pages are still published or some similar product, or you could Google names up and anyone with names like Zinkovich or, I don't know, Yelena or Oksana. We can think of lots of names. We can keep it going forever. You could pull them in, collar them. They must be guilty of something, after all. Now, returning to the name of Marcus, now, your lovely host sitting here is a Marcus. It's not that uncommon a name. It's common in British history, and you can find hundreds of people called Marcus. Monzo is apparently, when I googled it, a name of Italian origin, and presumably, I imagine this suggests maybe Mr. Monzo's family moved around a bit or emigrated. 
It may also have a, a Spanish equivalent. So many names do have more than one version. But if I wandered around London, I'd find lots of Marcuses. And one way I'd find a lot of Marcuses would be in Stamford Hill. And I'd also find a lot of people with unpronounceable names. But no one would seriously suggest that the Jewish population of Stamford Hill were all on the nick of a rob because they have awkward to pronounce names. And, of course, it would be a completely stupid and bonkers suggestion. And anyone suggesting it would be an anti-Semite of the First Order who should be dismissed out of hand. Mr Webb seems to be suggesting that we can somehow use funny to pronounce names to get patterns of criminality. That's very dubious, Mr. Webb, and has no connection to, to police work of any kind. It's very, very dubious. But let's look at a number of people called Marcus. Here's Marcus, the name. Marcus is a masculine given name of ancient pre Roman pre Christian origin. And Simon is also not, a, a, of course, a British name originally, if we can ever define what a British name is. Perhaps you should do a video on it, Mr. Webb, and define these British names for us. Let's have a look down the list and see how many people we can find are British, or at least European even. We'll expand it a bit. We have Marcus Brigstock. We have, um, and I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this gent's surname from the, who's Flemish, Marcus de Gerat. Anyone who's, um, who knows how to pronounce it better than me is free to stick up a hand and get involved. Marcus Dilston, British first director. Marcus Vahili, lead vocalist of Irish vocal band Westlife. Uh, amusingly, one of Mr. Webb's regulars told me that Irish people are not called Marcus unless they're all posh upper class gits, which I found absolutely hilarious as the name has quite a lot of regional popularity in the past in the area my father came from. And I assure you, my father is not a posh upper class git. He was a farm labourer as a young man and then a soldier. I found it hilarious to be told about my culture from someone who had never lived there, never visited there, and who was just waffling. Marcus James, current bassist for the rock group Breaking Benjamin. And we can go on and on and on and on. And on and on and on and on and on. Marcus Gansira in the Germanic spelling with M uh, sort of M-A-R-K-U-S. Mark. It goes on and on and on and on. Seems to be creating something out of nothing, that whole tendency. Mr. Webb's links, which seem to be sometimes included just for the sake of it, as I never see him actually open them or utilise them on screen, suggest that the homicide rate was going down. And I suspect, given that the gentleman who killed Daniel and George has been described as a Spanish-Brazilian native, there's rather more to his background than Mr. Webb was letting on there. I find the whole video a hideously ugly production. And I have this to add at the end. Mr. Webb, the other day, you suggested that people get a good laugh if the name was Dave or John. No, Mr. Webb. I wouldn't get a good laugh if the name was Dave, John or Marcus, because I don't get a good laugh out of situations where, which involve the death of children. I don't have that kind of mind. My mind doesn't work that way. If you do, I truly pity you. Good day.